episode I'm talking about Memvika starring Roger Daltrey as the real life convicted armed robber from the 60s known as John Memvika. So Memvika is an interesting film actually because I never really knew about this um, film until maybe like probably probably maybe a few years maybe two years ago I think because it just sort of came, fl um, came by while I was looking about the who I think and Obviously, Roger Daltrey may has a well. He's basically appeared in a few films before. Uh, the adaptation of Tommy, nine seventy five, is a good example. And when I found when I found about this film, because how about how I found the film was it was through an interview with Top of the Pops when he presented Top of the Pops in nineteen eighty, in the same oh, it's the main vicar himself, Roger Daltrey, and I saw. Felt a bit fascinated with that. Um, for what is Mavica? And yeah, so for us to give a little find out, I didn't really find much on it. And it's one until I found I just found it like on the five second for give it a I'll give it a watch. Yeah. So this is based on John Mavica's John Mavica's autobiography during the times he spent in prison. Also the times when he escaped in prison as well. Um, basically, the film is basically well. The first part of the film is set in the prison. It is in the London and the Borstal, I think. Yeah, in the Borstal, and then obviously it, it shows him going through in, inter, the inter, interaction with the inmates, and then sort of plan to escape. He's like in through the guards, plan to escape, solve the revolution, sort of make a stand against the prison guards and the officials, which is quite good. And obviously, one of the ideas is. Is that the way they're treated? They want to basically because of how they've been treated, like being tortured and stuff like that. I think how it used to be like in the sixties. I think, and obviously they, it just makes sense and think you know we don't want to be treated like a piece of crap, bully too hard. You know we need to make it stop, and that's what they, and that's what they did. They made a stand, lock themselves in a in, a, in the office, barricade themselves for maybe overnight or a couple of days, and then. The, the was was the it's been solved. The solution has been solved. And then stri straight afterwards, um, the vicar basically wants to escape. He wants to be freed out of this postal. And it's got some similarities with Shawshank Redemption, because what they do, they basically dig out for a hole while they find some dry plaster in the showers, and they basically just escape from there, which is interesting. Which is quite a bit. Well, it's, it, well it's, it's interesting, but a bit, a bit differently, but, yeah. So they, so he and some other prisoners tend, uh, well, one of the other prisoners actually uh, tend to escape by digging out a hole, digging out, and basically going for, a, going for a barn, going for the roofs and all that and stuff. And... Basically, after, afterwards, well, he escapes afterwards and goes to the police. He hides in various places, tool sheds, uh, maybe, you know, maybe like an old rail shed, I think. No, like an old cinder box, I think. And near the park, and he, got, he goes back to his family, to his wife and son. But I think before that, he goes to to his one of his friends, one of his colleagues, I think, and he stays there with his wife for for maybe a couple of days, and afterwards. Me, his real family, in the end, and obviously at that time it's, it's him, basically, coming to maybe coming to terms with his imprisonment, his sentence, and also being on the run, being very low key, but also, I think it's also doing um, him revenge. I think, but also doing another rob at the same time, which is a bit. It seems, it seems pointless, but it just depends. It basically depends what this man's going through, and is You don't really see what goes through his head, if you know what I mean. And then, yeah. Well, the story itself actually is fantastic. The way it's written, um, they, the actual John Mavica actually wrote the screenplay, which is fun, which is interesting. He actually did wrote the screenplay to this movie, 
which is quite funny. Um, Roger Daughtry produced this as well. I can't remember who the guy who actually, was it Tom something who actually directed it? And Jeff Wayne, Jeff Wayne who did the musical version of War of the Worlds, uh, composed the music. He did with a few people singing. Also Daughtry does with, has a couple of songs by him as well, which is quite good. Uh, the members of the Who, but at this time the members of the Who were obviously Townsend, Daltrey, M. Whistle, and Kenny Jones, Keith Moon's replacement at the time. Actually, they became mu music consultants on the f on the film. And then, obviously, well, the music itself was actually really good. I really enjoyed it. You know, it sort of powers along sometimes. Nice best songs there, here and there by some of them. I think it's about two people actually sung a few of the songs, I think. But Jeff Wayne actually did a fantastic job on this, on this with the music. Excuse me, and we and I found it really good, indeed. So, is this worth watching? This film, The Vicar. I I think so. Yeah, I would say yes because it's an it's it's autobiographical. Um, it's based on real tr uh, true thing, true stories. I think it's done by the it's done by experience of a man, basically an armor up in the sixties who basically just. You know, go, goes through hell in prison, escapes, then tries to be low-key, then goes back again, if you know what I mean. It's like going to hell and back. Yeah. It's, and it's, well, it's, it's just basically interesting. It's interesting because it's all, it's Roger Daltrey, um, become, well, being, act, well, going to acting, really. And I basically find that is inter that's interesting because sometimes his performance in this is actually really good. I think his interpretation of the vicar is good. And I do think, I mean... He hasn't done much in a few films, uh, much films, but he actually did, does a really good job on this, he does. You know, he really nails the performance ni nicely. It's nice. It's it's always weird that, you know, he always you always think that, the, you know, the, the front man of The Who, the lead singer of The Who, is, you know, basically acting. You can see, you, you hear his real voice. It's kind of weird and strange, but, but it is really good. I do think so. And some of the other cast members are actually really good as well. Uh, some of the inmates that he comes across are really good, actually really interesting characters they are. Quite very, you know, interesting. Same as the officials in the prison, which are quite good. In which one of them does actually get gets him in the end, double across him and gets him in the end. Just like that. And, yeah. So, Nick Vicker. It is probably a worth watching. Because it's, yeah, it's based on, it's based on true events. You have, an, you have, you have a, uh, looks like a fit, a rock icon. Doing an, having to leave a performance, you know, uh, taking on the reins of basically this of this convicted criminal armed robber, very much then skipping in, and so on and so on. But I do think the vicar is great. Give it a watch if you want, and see what you think. So that's my review of my vicar from 1980, and I'll see you for the next review.